Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. You see how I love my audience. I still want to record the videos with great guests in spite of me moving in my physical form <laughs> around this planet. So today I have back wonderful Ashala Yardley. Welcome back, Ashala. Thank you so much, Anya. I'm happy to be here. Yes, me too, because today I wanted to do something different for, for us, for two of us and for the audience, because I just wanted to have a conversation with you mm. about the current events and current energies uh, without any other tools that normally you use, which you are so deep and so spiritual and so aware of things intuitively. Um, yeah. that, that it is, that a lot of people have awareness of it, some people maybe don't, but I would like to present that side of Ashala that I happen to get to know through so many months of our conversations, of the recordings, and I appreciate that so much. Mm. Thanks, so man. Ashala, so you know, I want to start with me being here at this timing of... Mm of, you know, the funeral that took place yesterday. Absolutely. And you know what, I want to ask you, because I actually felt, you on your channel were talking about it, about two or three weeks, three weeks ago now, mm -hmm. um, about those energies of grief that will be presented to us Mm -hmm. And I felt yesterday, when it was the very day um, of the funeral, I actually felt the energy of very light and very relief. And, you know, there, there were people who were sad and there were people who were paying the tribute, right? But overall, I didn't feel anything um, disturbing or... Mm -hmm or negative in, so, in my perception. I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. And I actually listened to, um, I think it was the one that you did the day before yesterday when you were walking around and showing Kensington Park and the, the geese and- the, Oh, you saw it. Okay, yes, I that thought, was the day, yes. yesterday, yesterday. Oh, yes. that was yesterday, okay. Yes. So um, what was, interesting i mean i i heard you mention the number 19 and that that was the the number that was chosen and it's fascinating in a way because the number 19 in the tarot is the sun card which is very different than the energies of grief it's kind of like the moon card comes right before the sun and it is the the moon is the deep subconscious uh it's the very deep spiritual nature and the sun is the bright new day hmm. so i was reflecting on that and also feeling that what we are actually grieving uh if we can look at it this way is we are grieving the end of an era and it's actually not the grieving of we don't like we do want that era to end <laughs> a lot of things about it. It's not the grieving of the loss of it. It's the grieving of all that took place during that era. It's the grieving of the trauma that was piled on. You know, I mean, if we think about the British Empire, the royal mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and a lot of what's happened uh with expansion and you know the power dominant model over the last few hundred years but even during the reign of this particular monarch a lot has taken place you so know actually is, yeah yeah go ahead but you know i want to tell you because um yesterday where well, i'm staying is not too far away from where where they were actually driving to Windsor mm -hmm. and not the parade because the parade with all the soldiers and the music and, and royal family members was going to Buckingham Palace and from there there were cars you know driving 
So, you know, I actually said, you know, if I'm so close, I might just stop here and record. And actually I was able to capture that uh, casket in the car passing. Um, that's a different story, by the way, we're gonna talk about this on my Patreon, <laughs> everyone. That's a different story. I don't want to mention this here. But what I want to tell you is when, when I was standing there, uh, there were those barricades, very spacious, this area. Not Well, there were people, not too many, though. Like they were in uh, Westminster Abbey, where was the funeral taking place. But I was watching on YouTube live because I wanted to have an awareness how far they are. <laughs> and when I was watching that live transmission, I look at those soldiers mm -hmm. and they were, you know, I look at them and, and I thought to myself, how do you really feel now? Mm -hmm. um, how many of those were that first one, how do you feel? And second, I look at them and I said, how many of them, people like them, young men and women have died in the wars that took place because of certain decisions. Absolutely. And not just United Kingdom, but the colonies. Totally, totally, yes, yes. So how, I wanna know, I wanna know this from you because of course it's, a, it's not, you don't speak for entire Canadian population, but mm -hmm. you speak for some population how overall i'm just curious canadians are perceiving the monarchy and is there anything that you hear maybe as far as the future of monarchy hmm. well you know i think it's really very mixed anya i think it's mixed in terms of uh generations you know the older generation we're still hmm. uh you know, part of that era. And I know, for example, my parents and grandparents were in the wars, and that they still, you know, it was it was kind of divided between having still a reverence for those systems and the monarchy representing that, and a kind of pride or a kind of um, deference to the value of that, but definitely with the younger generations, it seems like there's, I, 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 in a way, I almost feel like the younger generations of Canadians identify more as Americans, North mm -hmm. Americans. Okay. okay. So you can really feel how just through the generations, it's, mm -hmm. it's grown further and further away. And yeah, like, for example, I, I know when my mom went to school, they had to do, you know, God save the queen. <laughs> and, okay. and then when I went to school, we had to sing, oh, Canada. <laughs> but I was a point where it was like a little bit of both. And, and now, of course, they don't do any of those things. So um, it's I fading away, heard. right? It's kind it's, of fading yeah, it's away. It's fading away. It's fading away. And, you know, it, this feels like the end of something. Like, yes. I just can't imagine even, uh, like, I'm not speaking for the British population, but I'm just speaking more for these next generations of people. I just can't imagine them paying that much homage to something like this anymore. You know, it's like we live in an era where people like yourself, uh, and all these different um, influencers on social media and on YouTube can can develop a following overnight that outstrips, you know, the major media outlets. Like, oh, Shala, my following is like, <laughs> yes, no, it isn't though, Anya. If you were to watch, I even had the experience with my channel where I watched one time there was something from. CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, which is definitely mainstream media here in Canada. And I had seen that they had posted something um, 
Mm -hmm. like it was like some kind of video or something and then mm -hmm. it was about the same number of five or six hours from the time I had posted my last video and I actually had more views on mine in that time period than they had on there. well yeah you know that's you know, I, I, right? I know what like, you mean yeah it's like with Biden <laughs> I always say this is like with Biden like uh and then I wonder actually because YouTube, they were kind of sidetracking now, but YouTube stopped doing the, they don't show you the dislikes now. So I actually started to think about it. Is it because of Biden? Because there were so many dislikes and so many videos. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, could but be, what it could be is that, you know, we were so worried about mainstream media. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and the influence it's having on people sitting in their living room watching their television but it's already shifting even I think in the last two or three years so many people are gathering their news through yes uh, resources like what you're offering what I'm offering and mm -hmm. uh you know uh, influencers on YouTube there's it's it's a whole new game so mm -hmm. I feel like um that end of the era is the end of a lot of things the end of a lot of eras and the grieving is really about wow let's stop and and realize just how all-encompassing that was and like you said how many people died and then you go back through the different eras over the last two or three thousand years and you know the monarchies in europe and these power brokers these you know power dominant models it's it's really tragic and we're carrying all of that around like it comes down through the generations and there's a lot to there's a lot to fear feel sorrowful about but it also I I'm so delighted to hear that you had the experience of something something was lifted something yes, was exactly you know? that's how I felt yes yeah. and you know the nature the in spite of London being very busy city, and especially, especially in those last few days, because let's face it, a lot of people came to London for that event yesterday. So there is more people, there's always a lot of people here, but there's more people, especially Definitely. because of that funeral. Mm -hmm. But there is still that incredible, beautiful nature, the parks in London, I mean, England overall has beautiful nature, but those parks are so spectacular, just beautiful parks and, you know, the trees and the birds and the the energy in Kensington Palace yesterday was really, you know, there was the sense of like calmness in the mm -hmm. air and people, what, what really, what really struck me yesterday and in a nice way surprised me was when I was walking through quite big number of crowds, mm -hmm. um, especially after the whole thing ended, mm -hmm. but there was no collusions. There was no, there was very easy and flow movement. You know, like somehow people were getting together, going mm -hmm. into their own directions, their own ways without any issues like you didn't jump on one another you were just respecting one another and going your own way it was incredible because it was a lot of people actually so I was surprised so th there was like the movement or of energy um and they were not frustrated or it was just very very nice <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. it was so nice but but I want to say this because you mentioned this about the end of the era you know when you were saying this what came to me um it's, it truly is, it's like in relationships that many, many people stay in those toxic, unhealthy relationships, okay? Mm -hmm. Because they are afraid that when those relationships end, in a way like they define themselves to some extent by being in it and not being able to visualize, imagine life without that mm -hmm. person, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think, because the last two years, let's say in UK, right, the the, the scary flu situation, <laughs> I mean, people really paid a big price. And mm -hmm. now, and I wonder, you know, the timing of it, right? The timing of it. It's like now you can gather, now you can actually be out there, you don't have to wear, and you can mm -hmm. touch and you can, you know, 
breathe yes. and mm -hmm. and and in a, in a way like people forgot already um what they had to put up with mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's good they forgot but it's like you have to remember also <laughs> because we're looking at the same people now mm -hmm. who are acting mm -hmm. differently yes okay <laughs> yes <laughs> totally <laughs> well you know and i want to just go back to what you said about that the nature feels so good and that people felt kind of in a positive space somehow like they weren't you know considering this is a funeral and we know about you know i i read and heard years ago that these power brokers i just call them the power brokers mm -hmm. the ones that want a paradigm where they're in control and they dominate humanity uh they are really into ritual and they align their rituals based on astrological configurations because they know that you can capitalize on directing those energies when yes. their veils are thin when people are in a really open psychic psychologically deep space spiritual space and you know consequently this time of year the pisces full moon is often the time where there's these specifically designed rituals to direct that energy in a certain way and you know you mentioned and i had mentioned september 11th was one of those times yes all those years ago that's right around the full moon in pisces again so you know here we have a scenario where uh for a really long time when they did that they could quickly direct that energy into fear into a kind of deep sorrow a sense of um isolation you know that kind of solidifies into almost like a depression or something like that low a, and a dense sense, low yes. and dense low frequency a sense mm -hmm. of hopelessness helplessness you know looking for the enemy out there someone to attack all that kind of divisive energy well i find it fascinating that you know this time feels very different to me and mm -hmm. i've you know been speaking with my clients this week people who've uh, booked readings with me and this has come up in several readings and even uh the possibility or the suggestion that we have actually accelerated into a, a better timeline scenario and one of those markers has that is that a few people have noticed that nature feels better I yes. know myself and my friends out walking uh, in this last week or 10 days, we noticed that everything smelled better. Like, I mean, yeah, it's getting cooler and, uh, you know, the maybe the air is a bit fresher, but no, it felt really different. Things felt really good. But I think, but I think that is us because you can only perceive what you are, who you are. So it's well, us. It I think it could be both. I think it's us okay. and the natural world and that we're all, you know, I feel like we've all kind of gone through this particular full moon and Pisces portal energy. And actually there's no, no stopping this ascension kind of evolution that we're experiencing. So even with those rituals that were designed to take us a certain way, it's it's actually maybe done the opposite like you said there's people out on the street kind of being gentle with each other and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that and you, there's a, a lightness to it yes but you know in another way i want to say i mean this everyone knows but it's important to remind this ourselves because that's if we just go into quantum physics for a moment mm -hmm. not some people think this mumbo jumbo spirituality. No, it's all connected here. Because truly the where attention goes, there mm -hmm. the energy flows. So it's Absolutely. very simple. So mm -hmm. they always, always fought 
for our attention. Because grabbing people's attention, you actually tapping into streams of energy. Mm -hmm. people, so people are fueling their, their energy, literally their energy. Like the, the biggest expre expression of love, in my opinion, is the attention. Mm -hmm. Is the attention. Right? Is the attention, yes. is care, is absolutely because, yes. Because you right, that's that's mm -hmm. that's how you express love. So now if there is an event, like you're saying, and then they want everyone's attention to be directed there, because you cannot, like Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters, love or fear. So now we that's are going right. this way, right? Yeah, and then the energy is, and then people feel tired and drained mm. and not interested in things and sad and not motivated exactly exactly and you know it's just fascinating that even something that was maybe intended to have take us in a certain direction it feels like we are like growing beyond that <laughs> yes. you know we're growing beyond being hooked in to those older paradigm frequency hijacks we are you know and this is what's really beautiful about people are often feeling like what can i do to mm -hmm. fix this crazy scenario in the world and if we continue to work in our own little realm with ourselves with our immediate circle of people and influences where we put our attention, as you're saying, like that does affect the quantum and the collective starts to rise. And it isn't something where we have to go out and fight one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. with those energies. It's literally like they just, they just lose their grip on us. Yes. They lose. And I, I like that you described, you know, the dysfunctional or, or abusive relationship. And this is you know, when we shift those, those, again, the hooks that kind of lock us into those dysfunctional relationships, they just begin to lose their effect. And so, for example, like the bully or the, or, you know, the, the narcissist or whatever, they go at things in a certain way. And if they don't get a result after trying a few times, they have to abandon that approach so it's it really we have tremendous ability to I almost call like call it blast all that with love like like it's it sounds so cliche but it's like blast it with our you know our generosity like you say our good intentions and our our good attention and where we put that attention you know we just don't pay attention, pay less and less attention mm -hmm. to the shenanigans. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're counting on us hooking in and getting scared and dividing. Yes. As still, we, yes. As we let go of that. I mean, of course, we're still going to bite those hooks sometimes because as it comes really close into our field, it, you know, it raises those anxieties, but we're working together to support each other. You know, I've seen in my own friend circle of awake people where like, you know, someone like we seem to go through rounds of like, oh no, this person's kind of getting all anxious and, and, you know, paranoid and whatever. And it's like, you just sort of come in and say, Hey, yeah, I know it's scary, but like, look, mm -hmm. look what you're doing and look what we're doing and look what so-and-so's doing. And we just kind of keep lifting each other up. And more and more, I've noticed that people are feeling, you know, it's not just this false hope. It's like they truly are feeling safer in their own skin. They're feeling more secure in the unknown. <laughs> because it's better to know the truth and be aware of it. That mm -hmm. actually, that as, as scary as it might be at first, is actually very empowering. It is. It is. And, and you know, 
I, I feel like this is something for us to consider as well. And imagining that more and more people are going to be waking up and mm -hmm. we, we know that they are. And it is scary at first. And they do tend to go maybe a little bit off the deep end or extreme or whatever. And, um, you know, and then they run around and speak about what's happening in a really scary way. And of course, that pushes the people that are maybe on the edge ready to wake up. It pushes them back 10 steps. Like now they're scared and they're like, no, I don't believe any of that. You know, like but then but then there is winter and the bill comes. <laughs> right. Right. And you're like, it just doesn't make sense what's going on here. It's Putin's fault. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Well, no, this not. is the thing, you know, when people are when people are shut down, there's always going to be a scapegoat. They are not going to look for a critical, critically analyzed yep. situation. They're just going to look for the first easy yep. scapegoat. So if we really want to change the overall um, status quo or consensus reality and lift it up, you know, the, we don't want to be talking scary stuff to people. Uh, we, you know, it just doesn't, it's not going to serve anything. If anything, we want to look like we're having such a great time. They're like, wait a minute. <laughs> what do you know that I don't know? And then we say, oh, I know a lot of things. And, you know, we just have to start finding ways to gradually pull them in and not overwhelm them. You know, I've actually seen in readings with people where it doesn't even necessarily matter that much if people agree on all these so-called facts that are true as long as we have enough common ground about how we want to go forward and what we don't want anymore <laughs> it's like you know whether we know exactly what transpired i feel like we're going to be solving these riddles of history for a really long time yes we i have feel to like rewrite it's, everything uh, yeah, yeah and it's going to take a long time to get you know sort out all these mm -hmm. controversial threads of like it's a it's a tangled web it's a really tangled web and it's probably going to take you know I would think decades at least if not generations of people slowly you know understanding what's happened here but we don't even necessarily need to know all those details we just need to know there's a pattern there's a pattern and the pattern is just like with bullies and uh, abusive relationships, the pattern mm -hmm. is, you know, you get people codependently hooked on whatever, whatever, uh, you know, paradigm, whatever value system or belief system you're, you're feeding them, you get them hooked on that and you've got them kind of under your spell. And so it's true. It's true because even here, um, I, was, I was listening to a few channels before I came to the UK. And it was interesting to hear from people who are never very much pro-royal family that they were feeling this enormous sense of loss and sadness. And they were asking themselves, like, what's going on with me? Well, because there has been a certain energy created, especially mm -hmm. for this region here. And that's why I'm really surprised yesterday because I felt I didn't feel that much sadness. There was, you know, of course, some people were serious and sad, and, but I felt very, I just perceive it not as a low, dense frequency, but more just very present. Yes, like very present. Like, so, like people are witnessing something. They're witnessing. Exactly. The end of that yes. Era. Yes. Yeah. But res respectfully, but without too much attachment to it, I would say. That's how I felt. Mm -hmm. I mean, me analyzing, you know. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> but anyway, wow. Ashala. So we end this here, everyone, because mm -hmm. we have, I have a few questions for Ashala that I want to ask. Um, on my Patreon and we will look into it. So those of you who are interested, you can tap into my Patreon and hear what I've asked Ashala, but we will connect next week. And 
all the links to Ashala will be down below the video, including the still going on, is it? One Just day. Promote. One what? day, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's it's a twenty one percent off, is it right? From from contacting Kashala and booking the reading with her. Okay. So, so if they purchase it in the next twenty four hours, uh, they can book at any time in the future. Okay. So everything is down there if you're interested. And those of you who want to more want to know more about what I'm curious about, can get to my Patreon and we deep dive there. A little. Great. Thank you guys Bye for, for watching. Until next time.